The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Philadelphia brand is far and away America's favorite cream cheese. That's because it's so creamy white, so delicately rich, and so fresh tasting. But remember, there's only one Philadelphia cream cheese. It's the brand that's made by Kraft and guaranteed fresh. So when you buy cream cheese, always look for the name Philadelphia brand right on each silvery package. Well, there's a new interest in the life of the great Gildersleeve. She's the charming society widow from Baltimore, Mrs. Ellen Knickerbocker, who's visiting her brother, Mr. Buller, just across the street. So far, our rotund Romeo hasn't captured the heart of his new Juliet, but he's still trying. Right now, they're dancing in the palm room of the Summerfield Hotel. Uh, uh, Ellen. Yes? This is wonderful. Waltzing with you. The lights turned down low and everything. Yes, it's very nice. Good orchestra, too. Mervyn Hotstetter in the Summerfield Six. <laughs> yes. I guess the Summerfield Palm Room doesn't seem like much to you after all those high-class places back in Baltimore. Oh, I think it's a very charming room, Throckmorton. Well, not bad, I guess. It's the swankiest place in Summerfield. Two dollars cover charge. That includes the dinner. Oh. <laughs> of course, ours was two and a quarter. We had the soup and the salad. <laughs> 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 Did I step on your toe? No, it's quite all right. Sorry, I was dancing with my eyes closed. More romantic that way. <laughs> <laughs> Just a kiss in the dark. Oh, that's nice. Go on. Was to her mm, just a lark. But to me, t'was a thrill supreme. Sure would be. <laughs> Just a kiss in the dark, but it kindled a spark, the awakening of love's young dream. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Th oh, they were applauding the band. <laughs> wonder what they'll play next. Throckmorton, I wonder if we could go home now. I'm, I'm just a little bit tired. Oh, of course I'll get your wrap. Thank you. She's wonderful. Can't wait till we say goodnight on the porch. Oh, that kiss in the dark. Here we are. Yes. Uh, thank you for a very nice evening, Throckmorton. Oh, thank you for going with me. Well, it's late. I think I'd better go in now. Good night. Y Ellen. Yes? Uh, beautiful night, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Kind of romantic, too. Standing here on the porch. Just you and me and the milk bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, good night, Throckmorton. Ellen. Yes? Just a kiss in the dark. <laughs> good night. Oh, Ellen, how about a kiss? Now, Throckmorton, we haven't known each other very long. We're just good friends. Well, then, just give me a friendly kiss. Yeah. <laughs> no, things like this just aren't done in Baltimore. Baltimore doesn't know what it's missing. I'm going in now. Oh, Ellen. Shh. Wait the bullets. Come on. I won't let you go in. 
Throckmorton, get your foot out of that door. <laughs> Give me a kiss first. Now, I told you I... Oh, Throckmorton. Darn it, I missed. Good night. <laughs> Ellen, if you won't kiss me tonight, how about the next time we go out? Well, maybe. Good night. She said maybe. <laughs> oh, darn milk bottles. <laughs> Good morning, children. Uh, Uncle Morris. Yes? How was your date with your dream girl last night? What? Did you kiss her goodnight, Uncle? Marjorie, a gentleman doesn't discuss those things. For your information, Mrs. Knickerbocker and I are just good friends. Besides, your uncle is not in the habit of trying to kiss every lady he takes out. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Let's change the subject for your own good. I have no intention of getting romantic with Mrs. Knickerbocker. Until the next time we go out. <laughs> oh, Uncle. Yeah. Pass the grape nuts, Marjorie. Thank you. Uncle Mort, if you can forget Mrs. Knickerbocker for a minute, I have something to tell you. Hmm? You're going to have a little visitor this morning. Who's that? The baby. The baby? Uh-huh. Bob called a while ago. He's bringing her right over. Well, that's wonderful. I certainly miss that little rascal. Little Romery. I'll never forget the day I found her in the back of my car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a surprise that was. <laughs> good morning, Miss Gilsley. Hey, good morning, Bertie. Have you heard the news? Little Romery and her father are coming over this morning. The baby? Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. There she is. I'll get her. I'll get her. I'll get her. Now, let's not get excited, everybody. I'll get her. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Bob. Well, little Romery. Hello, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, both of you. Thank you. Oh, look at her. Hello, oh, Romy. Oh, hi, Romy. Why, she's getting cuter every day. <laughs> well, this is wonderful having you two over here. Well, thanks. We, we dropped over because uh, Romery wants to invite you to her birthday party tomorrow. Birthday party? Yeah, she's, she's going to be one year old. Really? Well, what do you know about that? Romery, you're getting to be quite a big girl, aren't you? <laughs> we are just inviting you and your family, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh? It won't be a big party, of course. <laughs> Not much room in my apartment. Well, we'll certainly be there, Bob. And say, why don't you have the party over here? What? We've got lots of room. Oh, that's a wonderful idea, Anki. Oh, but it'll be a lot of trouble. Nonsense, Bob. We'd love to do it. And we can invite the judge and Peavy. We'll make it a birthday party so you'll never forget. Well, it's awfully nice of you, but it'll be so much bother. I'll tell you. Let's leave it up to the baby. Romery, how would you like to have your little birthday party at Uncle Throckmorton's house? Hmm? <laughs> she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Peavy, I want to invite you to a birthday party tomorrow afternoon at my house. Well, thank you. How old are you going to be, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> it's not for me. It's little baby Romery. Oh, you don't say. Well, I'll be happy to come. Good. And bring Mrs. Peavy. Uh, well, all right. <laughs> and, Mr. Gildersleeve, we'd like to invite you to a birthday party at our house next week. Oh? Are you having a birthday? No, I didn't say that. Oh, then it's your wife. <laughs> oh, no. Mrs. Peavy stopped having birthdays years ago, about, mm -hmm. about the time the Coolidge administration, I think. Who? <laughs> oh? Or was it McKinley? I don't remember. All right, Peavy. Who is having a birthday? Our parrot. Parrot? For heaven's sake, Peavy, parrots don't have birthdays. All right, does. Oh, he's going to be six years old, and he doesn't look a day over five. Peavy, I don't care about your parrot. Well, he doesn't care much for you, either. <laughs> this whole thing is ridiculous. How can you have a birthday party for a parrot? Well, we put a box of crackers in his cage with six candles on it. Mm. Then we light the candles, and Mrs. Peavy and I sing 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Peavy. Happy birthday, dear Otto. Otto? Happy birthday to you. Ye God, Peavy. They ought to take that Otto out of the cage and put you in it. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, well I would. See you tomorrow, 2 o'clock. <laughs> isn't my chubby friend Gilday. Judge, I just dropped in to invite you to my house tomorrow. I'm having a very special party. Oh? Who's it for, Gilday? Your new light of love, Mrs. Ellen Knickerbocker? Of course not. I hardly know Ellen, uh, Mrs. Knickerbocker. We're just casual acquaintances. Uh-huh. Well, a friend of mine saw you and your casual acquaintance dancing at the Summerfield Hotel last night. Cheek to cheek. Oh, he did? <laughs> yeah. At first, he thought the circus had come to town. What? He said you look just like a waltzing elephant. <laughs> if you stop laughing at your own joke, Judge, I want to tell you something. The party is for the baby. Oh? Romery. She'll be one year old. Well, isn't that nice? I'd be delighted to come, Gilda. Good. What a happy occasion. Seeing that little cherub's happy face as she passes her first milestone on the road. Oh, of... brother, save the speech for the party. Oh? All right. Yes, sir. You know, Judge, maybe we'll give you a party on your next birthday. A big cake, candles, and everything. Well, thank you. Of course, at your age, it'll take every candle in Summerfield. Yeah. <laughs> there. See you tomorrow, Judge. Two o'clock. And bring a present, you old goat. <laughs> Hope Ellen's home. Won't hurt to ask her to come to the baby's party. Of course, it won't be a fashionable affair like she's used to, but she might come. Must have birthday parties in Baltimore, too. A lot of old people there. Oh, Throckmorton. Uh, hello, Ellen. <laughs> just thought I'd drop by. Well, I'm glad you did. You're just the person I wanted to see. I am? Yes, I've got something thrilling to tell you. Do you know what that sweet brother of mine's going to do? Sweet brother? Oh, Mr. Bullard. He's going to give a big party at the country club. He is? Yes, it's going to be a very smart affair, just like the ones we have back in Baltimore. Quite she-she. Who's she? <laughs> There's just one thing missing. I haven't been able to find... That is, I don't have an escort. Escort? Oh, well, I've got a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go with me, Throckmorton? Would I? Oh, that's wonderful. It's going to be a tea dansant. Hmm? Uh, dansant. Oh, Yes. Of course, I haven't been Don Santing for a long time. <laughs> oh, Rock uh, Ellen. Yes? When we're out there, maybe we can get off by ourselves and, well, you know, just the kiss in the dark. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> when is the party? I hope it's soon. Oh, it is. It's tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. Yeah, that's it. Tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock? Yes. Well, you see, that is... Uh... What's the matter, Throckmorton? Well, Ellen, there's another party at 2 o'clock, and... Well, of course, if you'd rather go there than go with me. Oh, no, no, I didn't say that. All right, then. I'll expect you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> what am I going to do? If I go to Ellen's party, the baby will never forgive me. If I go to the baby's party, Ellen will never forgive me. Here I am with two parties to worry about. Now I know how Truman feels. <laughs> Here's a tip for you homemakers who are looking for a daisy fresh touch to brighten your springtime desserts. Top those desserts with wonderfully fresh tasting Philadelphia brand cream cheese, whipped. This fluffy fresh topping adds real spring sparkle to any fruit, plain cake, or one crust fruit pie. And it's such a quick and easy way to fix topping. Just put a package of delicate white Philadelphia brand cream cheese in a little bowl. Add a small amount of milk and whip lightly with a fork. And that's all there is to it. You'll have fluffy topping that's gloriously rich and so fresh tasting. In fact, genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese is guaranteed fresh by Kraft. You see, creamy white Philadelphia brand is made fresh daily in shining Kraft plants from coast to coast. Then it's rushed to food stores and ice-cold trucks and cars. 
That's why it's so important to remember there's only one Philadelphia brand. So be sure when you buy, look for the words Philadelphia brand on that famous silvery package. Then you'll know you have the cream cheese that's guaranteed fresh by Kraft. Well, the great Gildersleeve has a serious problem. Where shall he go? To the baby's birthday party or to the country club with the charming Ellen Knickerbocker? Yes, that's his problem, and he's decided to sleep on it. The trouble is, he can't sleep. Hmm. Yeah, I know it's three o'clock. What am I going to do? I really ought to spend tomorrow with the baby? Hmm. Little Roe Marie. Why, she was practically like my own baby there for a while. Just like one of the family. I forgot her birthday. She'd never forgive her Uncle Throckmorton. But what about Ellen? Yeah, she's depending on me, too. I can't let her down. We'd have such a wonderful time dancing. Maybe she let me have that kiss. The baby's so cute. But so is Ellen. And the baby's so cuddly. But so is Ellen. <laughs> what am I going to do, baby? What do you say, Ellen? Kiss me, Throckmorton. That settles it. I'm going with Ellen. <laughs> well, just have to tell the family I can't come to the baby's party this afternoon. It's going to be a little hard to do, but, well, I guess they'll understand. Good morning, Uncle. Uh, good morning, my dear. Marjorie, there's something... Oh, Unky, I'm so excited about the party. I just can't wait for it to start. Can you? Well, uh, uh, Marjorie... It was just wonderful of you to do, do this for the baby. Um... You deserve a great big kiss. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's Leroy out in the hall. Oh, well, I think I'll go talk to him. Uh, Leroy! Hi, Unk. What are you tacking up there, Leroy? How do you like this sign? Happy birthday to Romery. I made it myself. Oh, yes. Birthday. (laughs) B-E-R-T-H. Very cute. Yeah. Uh, Leroy. Guess who was just over here, Unc? Brenda. Oh, Brenda, your little girlfriend? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's nice. Leroy, She wanted me to go to the movies this afternoon. Movies? Oh, are you going? What, and miss the baby's party? Are you kidding? Well, uh... Gee, we're giving the party, Unc. I couldn't walk out on it. No. Only a rat would do that. (laughs) See you later, Leroy. Uh, This is going to be harder than I thought. Oh, hello, Mr. Gilfleet. Hello, Bertie. Well, I got the birthday cake in the oven. Mm -hmm. We're going to give that baby a real party. Uh, Yes, Bertie. There's something I want to tell you. I know you'll understand. What's that, Miss Gilsey? Well, I can't be at the baby's party this afternoon. Huh? Well, I'm sorry, but I have another engagement, Bertie, with Mrs. Knickerbocker. Oh. Yes. You see, I gave her my word. Bertie, you understand. Yes, sir, I understand all right. But is that little baby going to understand? But Bertie... I can see her little face when she looks around the table and you're not there. She's going to say to herself, oh, where's Mr. Gilsey? Yeah, but Bertie, there'll be a lot of other people there. Won't make no difference to her. She's going to say to herself, oh, where's Mr. Gilsey? But... Uh, That's what she's going to say. Oh, where's Mr. Gilsey? <laughs> Bertie! She's going to look around and see Judge Hooker there. She's going to see Mr. Peavy there. She's going to see Leroy, Marjorie, and Bertie there. But you know what she's going to say to herself? Yes, That's Bertie. That's right. Oh, where's Mr. Gilsey? <laughs> Bertie, I can't disappoint that baby. I'm going to tell Ellen I can't go. Well, Throckmorton, this is a surprise. I didn't expect to see you until 2 o'clock. Well, I just thought I'd drop over, Ellen. I, uh, 
Wanted to talk to you about the party this afternoon. Oh, you know that party's on my mind so much. I couldn't sleep last night. Neither could I. Ellen. Hmm? <laughs> Just suppose I told you that I had to break our date. I bet you wouldn't even care. <laughs> oh, wouldn't I? Huh? I think breaking a date is the most unforgivable thing a person can do. You do? If any man did that to me, I'd never speak to him again. If I met him on the street, I would cut him dead. Oop, I'm dead. <laughs> but, Throckmorton, I know you'd never do a thing like that. Me? No. <laughs> See you this afternoon. Two o'clock. <laughs> Well, children, it's almost two o'clock. I guess uh, Mrs. Knickerbocker and I'll better get started for the country club now. <laughs> See you later. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I know you'll have a wonderful time at the birthday party. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> now, children, don't take it this way. Leroy, you don't think I'm a rat, do you? <laughs> guess he does. <laughs> well, goodbye. Uh, Miss Marja. Oh. Hello, Bertie. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gilsley. Well, got to be going. I'm sure you'll all have lots of fun at the birthday party, and so will the baby. The baby? She ain't going to have no fun. Huh? No, sir. She's going to look around that table and see that empty chair and say to herself, Oh, where is Mr. Gilsley? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, now, who's that? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Bob. Ah! Uh, hello, Romery. Come in. I guess we're a little early. Oh, that's all right, Bob. Bob, I... Uh, uh, I'll just take these packages out of the kitchen. Would you mind holding the baby for a minute? Um, there. <laughs> I'll be right back. But, Bob, I... Baby, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Here's your keys. Romery, your Uncle Throckmorton is sorry, but he can't come to your little birthday party. No. You see, there's someplace else he has to go. You understand, don't you? Sure you do. You're too young to miss me anyway. Well, have to leave now. Baby, <laughs> mustn't put your little arms around my neck. Let go now. <laughs> Let go, Romery. There, that's right. Put you right down here on the floor on this little pillow. There, there you are. Goodbye now. <laughs> <laughs> baby, baby, don't cry now. Uh, uh, now, give me a little smile. Uh, that's it. Well, goodbye. <laughs> baby, baby, please, please. <laughs> Romery, do you want your Uncle Throckmorton to stay that much? <laughs> All right. I wouldn't leave you for all the tea, dance, ants, and Baltimore. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Romery. Happy birthday. Blow it out, Mr. Peavy. Well, all right, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you missed, Peavy. Let me do it. Here goes. Watch this now. <laughs> <laughs> you missed too, Judge. Why don't you two old goats let the baby blow it out? She's got more breath than the two of you put together. Well, now, uh, well, maybe she has. <laughs> oh. Go on, baby. You blow out the can. <laughs> Just give a great big puff. Go on now. Yeah. Come here a minute. Oh, uh, what is it, Marjorie? I wanted to tell you, I'm awfully glad you decided to stay for the party. Well, so am I, my dear. And I'm sorry about your date. What did you say to Mrs. Knickerbocker? Uh, I didn't say anything to her. What? I just put a note under the door and ran. Oh, poor Unky. Yeah, now Ella will never speak to me again. But what the heck? Look how happy the baby is. I wouldn't have missed this party for. I'll get it, Bertie. Excuse me. Ellen. Hello, 
Hello, Throckmorton. Well, I, I guess you got my note. Yes, I did. And I'm very angry with you. Oh, I was afraid you would be. But you see, I promised to give this birthday party for the baby, Yes, Ellen. I know. That's what I'm angry about. Why didn't you invite me? Huh? But what about the tea dance, Aunt, at the country club? Oh, there'll be other parties there. Today, I think I'd rather stay here with you. You would? Well, that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Gee, I can't believe it, Ellen. Come on, I'll introduce you to everybody. Oh, just a minute, Throckmorton. What? Before we go in, I, I want to tell you something. Oh? Throckmorton, I've never known a man like you. Like me? Some men have been, well, shall we say, more sophisticated than you, and uh, some have been better dancers. Yeah, well, yes, I'm no Fred Astaire. <laughs> He's thinner. <laughs> <laughs> but you're the sweetest, kindest man I've ever known. Well. Oh, uh, I brought a present for the baby, and, well, I have one for you, too. Huh? Here. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. And here's a present for you. Oh, it's a rock boy. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Ever notice how much easier it is to get up in the morning when there's a breakfast treat waiting? For instance, an extra good spread for your waffles or hotcakes or muffins or toast. A wonderfully rich, fresh-tasting spread of Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Wholesome, nutritious, and a really fresh touch for breakfast menus. Actually, Philadelphia brand cream cheese is made fresh every day, then rushed ice cold to food stores. That's why this cream cheese is guaranteed fresh by Kraft. So, get some tomorrow. Once you taste this delicate, rich cream cheese melting on your breakfast toast, you'll want it often. Just be sure you get genuine Philadelphia brand, the cream cheese that's guaranteed fresh by Kraft. Ladies and gentlemen, today, April 6th, is Army Day. All Americans join in saluting our United Armed Forces. The United States Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. Our country right now is building the largest, best-trained, technically educated, peacetime armed forces in its history. Today, serviceman is trained in the world's best technical schools. In the armed forces, he is given many educational opportunities in a large variety of subjects. This training builds ability and character for civilian as well as military life. And remember, every serviceman serves himself and his country. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Ellen Knickerbocker by Miss Martha Scott. The show was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, night, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Next week, the circus is coming to Summerfield and you won't want to miss it. The next time you raid the icebox, make that raid a success with Kraft's prepared mustard. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Extra hidden flavors in cold meats, cheese, eggs, salad ingredients pop right out. And there are two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, light, delicately spiced for those who like their mustard mild. And Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry, ready for icebox raids ready for your most special dinners. Just add a little mustard, and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft's prepared mustard. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.